Hello and welcome to Political Forum, Wednesday, May 28, 2014. Today we have our guest, Alderman Rick Munoz. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. And my name is Freddy Calixto. I'm a board member here at CAN TV. And we're going to talk about the 22nd Ward today and other things that are going on around the city regarding uh, the city council. So uh, we'll just start with... Uh, how things went today at City Council? What was the one of the topics that were that was discussed? At well, City Council we we, today? we had quite a bit going on in City Council today, and one of the things that we were uh, that I was supporting and moving through is that we introduced an ordinance that would require corporations, require companies that make over fifty million dollars, to pay a minimum wage of fifteen dollars, uh, rolling it in, uh, phasing it in in two years. Uh, but we believe that if a, if a company is making over fifty million dollars a year net proceeds, that they can afford. To to pay a $15 an hour wage. The important thing here is that we know that 850, 8, that 825, which is the state's minimum wage, is not enough to raise a family. Well over 70% of people on, live, on, on minimum wage right now, earning minimum wage, are heads of households. I mean, who can live on sixteen, fifteen thousand dollars a year uh, when you have two or three kids in the house? And it's just not fair. So we introduced that. We had a press conference. We had over twenty-one signatures sign the ordinance, and it went to committee. And hopefully, we'll have some hearings pretty soon, so we ha have some debate. Uh, there are people, there are people out there who say that if you raise the minimum wage, that we're going to lose business. And let me tell you, for the last twenty-five years that I've been in politics. Every time the minimum wage comes up, people cry foul and say we're going to lose businesses. We're going to, people are going to move out of the city. People are going to move out of the state. And the important thing is that every time we've raised it, it doesn't happen. No. <laughs> it doesn't happen because these corporations, these companies need to be where the people are at. Let me just give you an example. McDonald's. McDonald's yes. isn't going to move out. They're still going to sell. They're still going to sell their hot, their hamburgers. They're still going to sell their, their Happy Meals. Uh, but they should be paying a decent minimum wage where people who are working at the McDonald's don't have to, pe to depend on food stamps, don't have to depend on public aid. And the important thing here is that we need to take a stand. Uh, Twenty... Well over 103 precincts in the last primary uh, had the referendum question. Should, a, should corporations pay $15 an hour if they're making more than $50 million a year? And overwhelmingly, in 103 precincts all over the state of Chicago, overwhelmingly, by 87%, voters said yes. Wow. So we know people want this. We know we should be doing it. I mean, I represent the 22nd Ward, which is the neighborhoods of North Lawndale, Little Village, Vidham Park, and Leclerc Hurst, and Sleepy Hollow. And in th those neighborhoods are working class neighborhoods. These are people who are making ends meet by having one and a half, two jobs because their wages aren't high enough and it's just not fair to people. Yeah. And I think what happens is uh, with those kind of wages, the economy gets better because people have more money to spend. Well, yeah, so, study after yeah. study after study have demonstrated that when you increase the minimum wage, the minimum wage and moderate wage workers, they don't go stock, put their money in the stock market. They don't go buying uh, uh, second homes in, in Florida or second homes in Indiana. They invest in their neighborhoods. And this is why I'm a huge supporter, is that if we increase the minimum wage to $15, that means that all of those minimum and moderate wage workers will have more income to spend on 26th Street. Right. More income to spend uh, on Main Street America, what I call the, the business districts of our neighborhoods. And that's exactly what we want them to do. Because these people are, ma are making ends meet. Instead of buying one and a half pounds of beef, they'll buy two pounds of beef uh, to make with dinner. Uh, instead of only buying their son or daughter two pairs of jeans for the, for the summer, uh, they'd be able to afford three pairs of jeans. I mean, these are the meeting basic needs. And the important thing here is when a minimum wage, moderate wage worker gets an increase, lo gasta en el vecindario. Yeah. He spends it in the neighborhood. He or she will spend that money in the neighborhood. That's why it's a win-win for all our neighborhoods that we increase the minimum wage. Well, let's, let's hope they do the right thing. Yes. Uh, again, uh, let me remind you that this is a call-in show. And please call uh, with a question for the alderman. The three one two seven three eight one zero six zero, and we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, it's very exciting to hear about the fifteen dollar a minimum wage. Uh, two questions: What's the next step for City Council, and then how soon would this possibly be in effect in um, in, in the 
near Chicago. Well, in a perfect world, uh, we would have a hearing within the next two to three weeks uh, in the City Council Committee on uh, Audit and uh, Government Operations, uh, which is chaired by Alderman O'Connor, and then there'll be an up or a down vote. Uh, and ideally, we want that to happen. Part of the challenge here is that we've got the debate going on at three levels. Uh, you've actually four levels. You've got Speaker Madigan and the House Democrats, <clears throat> who just adopted the legislation to put the $10 state minimum wage on the ballot for November. Uh, you've got uh, the federal government trying to do something, although I don't think that with the Republican uh, controlled House of Representatives anything's going to happen at the federal government. Uh, you've got Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who just empowered a commission to study this issue. Uh, I, I don't believe we need to study it any longer, uh, but the mayor obviously does and appointed a 17 member commission to come back with recommendations within 14 days, within 45 days. And then you've got our effort, our effort that if if it goes through the legislative process and they give us an up or down vote uh, relatively quickly, we can have a vote on this within the next maybe six to eight weeks. I don't think that'll happen because obviously, like I said, it's being addressed at these different levels. Ideally, we want the debate to be had. We want it to happen. Uh, we want to have the debate, should it be 12 or should it be 15? Should it be 10? Uh, what do people believe and what's within the realm of possibility? Thank you, caller, for that question, and thank you, Alderman, uh, for updating us on that. Uh, another issue that's been uh, talked about in City Council and you know, with a lot of different wards, it's a pension issue. W where are we with that? Well, uh, the state legislature uh, adopted a pension reform bill that deals with three of our smaller pensions, uh, and uh, which only uh, which deals with 45% of the employees that the city has. It doesn't deal with c c teachers. It doesn't deal with police. It doesn't deal with fire. Um, and that legislation is waiting for the governor's signature. If the governor signs it, then it comes to the city council to see how we fund it. Uh, the mayor has already floated the idea that we he might want to consider a property tax increase, and I consider that. A hard sell uh, because the last thing we should do is put this problem on the backs of property taxpayers uh, who are the least able to afford we should try and figure out other sources of funding uh, there is an initiative there is an idea out there to tax uh, what's called uh, t tax the Chicago Mercantile Exchange which is called a transaction tax where if we tax the uh, the transactions that are held at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, we're able to tax Wall Street, tax LaSalle Street, tax the banks on every time they buy and sell uh, stocks in, in the market. Uh, and even if we only do a 0.01% tax on them, it would raise between 6 to $7 billion uh, for the municipalities uh, for, for Chicago. And that's why I'm in support of that. I don't believe we should be raising property taxes at a time when the, when, when the recession, when, when the economy has not picked up yet. But pension reform continues to be that problem that is haunting the city of Chicago because at the end of the day, uh, we have to pay the bill. We have to pay the bill. It's, I think it's a nationwide issue because it's affecting state here, here in Illinois, but uh, everybody in the, in the nation. Yes. This, uh, the future of pensions is going to change. So, uh, And thank you again for that update. Um, what about the 22nd Ward? You mentioned some, some things that were happening in the ward itself, but what, what kind of events or what kind of issues... Are, have happened recently, are going to happen? Well, it's the 22nd Ward, yes. and it's a working class community that, like I said, the, the neighborhoods I represent Let me are, put this up. Uh, yes. This is the... On the upper left-hand corner is North Lawndale. That's Cermak Road on the north, uh, 51st Street on the south, uh, and that's Pulaski uh, right there. This is Pulaski uh, yes. Road. Uh, so, so it's the working class neighborhoods of North Lawndale, Little Village, Sleepy Hollow, uh, Leclerc Hurst, and Vidum Park. And I represent that neighborhood proudly because uh, I love the neighborhood that I uh, work in, that I uh, live in. Uh, and we've been able to do some great things over the last uh, 15, 20 years. Most importantly is the development of black clubs. 
a black club. A lot of times, a neighbor, the neighborhood knows each other as the owner of the red car, the owner of the blue car, or the owner of the van whose alarm is always going off. Uh, and we don't know each other by name. So we're very intentional about organizing black clubs, getting neighbors together on a regular basis uh, to uh, talk to each other, know each other as Mr. Martinez, Mr. Washington, uh, Miss Weatherford, uh, and then be able to talk about how you solve problems. Sometimes it's local problems like the corner store not picking up their garbage. Sometimes it's more a global problem uh, like the public safety uh, that might be happening at the park or the lack of public safety that we need to address. And so we have a lot of black clubs. And this year, we're really excited. This is our first year that we did this, and it just happened. But in the 22nd Ward, we instituted a process called participatory budget, uh, where every year, every alderman gets about a million and uh, a million and three hundred thousand dollars to spend on building infrastructure in the ward: streets, alleys, sidewalks, curbs and gutters, lighting, traffic signals. Uh, capital infrastructure and this year I decided to let my neighbors help us decide how to spend this money and it was great uh, back in November and in October November of last year we held three community gatherings three neighborhood assemblies where over uh, 400 people came to them and they gave us their ideas what should we fund what should we use this one million dollar for and then in the first week of may we just had the elections awesome. and uh the results were great we had over 600 residents come out and vote in these elections we had 17 projects to pick from mm. And of the 17 projects, six of them were funded. Uh, obviously, the most important one uh, was street resurfacing. Uh, voters in the in the neighborhood in the 22nd Ward were given the option to determine what percentage of the $1 million should be spent on street resurfacing because we just had a horrible winter and the potholes are, uh, are in really bad shape citywide. And the ward voted on 40%. So $400,000 of that $1 million is going towards street resurfacing, which means we'll be able to resurface both approximately 12, maybe 13 streets, 13 blocks, uh, which we uh, will be doing this summer. Among the other winners of uh, the participatory budget, for example, is Piotrowski Park won out. Uh, Piotrowski Park is the neighborhood park we have at 31st and Keeler, and they won a lighting project uh, where uh, the baseball fields and the soccer fields at Piotrowski Park need additional lighting. Uh, so we're going to spend some money on increasing the lighting there for the safety of the park so awesome. they, can, they can play a little later. And there was four other projects that were uh, funded. And we're really happy with the results because over 600 people came out to vote, over 400 people came to the neighborhood assemblies, and that's basically empowering the neighbors to help us decide how city money should be spent. That is, I think that's a great way to do that. And get their get the voice of your constituents. Yes, to hear awesome. them, and I and I saw them all come out to vote. Awesome, great. We have another call on the line. Caller, what is your question? Sí, buenas tardes, concejal Muñoz. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Mire, mi pregunta es en, por el barrio de la uh, 26 en la Cristiana. Más o menos he notado que hay este señas de permisos para parqueadero para los residentes. Sí. Esos son nuevos. Apenas los empecé a notar, pero son permanentes. O tienen, o cuando se este, los quitan, y también qué hacen con las personas que se quieren parquear y, y no viven en esa área. Uh, precisamente, uh, I'll translate okay. uh, the question. Uh, uh, the question is. Uh, she, she recently noticed, the caller recently noticed that some residential permit parking signs just went up at 26th and 27th in Christiana. And are those permanent? And what are other people, what are people that don't live there, can, what can people do that don't live there about parking? Uh, sí, mire, fíjese que eh, las cuadras ahí de la 26 y la 27 de la Cristiana hicieron una petición pidiendo el programa de estacionamiento residencial privado para que nada más gente que vive en la cuadra se puede estacionar ahí. Entonces, esas sí son permanentes, se va a mantener así para que nada más gente que vive en la cuadra, porque hay, hay, hay muchas personas que vienen a, de compras en la 26 y se estacionan ahí o dejan los carros todo el día y, la, y los vecinos, los, los residentes, no encuentran estacionamiento. Sí son per, per, permanentes y, y las acaban de instalar hace dos semanas. So, uh, the signs are permanent because those blocks came to my office last year and petitioned residential permit parking. We have a long process uh, of how to 
to determine whether or not a block should get residential permit block residential permit parking and the important thing here is that the residents wanted it they are going to be permanent and anybody who lives on the block can get the permit so that they can park on their own block they can also get guest passes Yes, yes. That's the other thing is that if you do have guests coming to visit you, you get these uh, one-day passes that your guests can put on their windshield so that they don't get a ticket. También pueden uh, comprar, uh, ya si, sea por el sitio de web o en la oficina de la secretaria de la ciudad, la secretaria Susana Mendoza, pueden comprar los, los, las calcamonías para sus carros que viven en la cuadra y también hay unas calcamonías que valen un día para que cuando viene el cuñado, viene la tía a visitarlos, les dan la calcamonía para que la pongan en el carro, para que no les den infracción. Thank you. We have another caller. Caller, what is your question? Hi, thank you very much for taking my call. You're I welcome. hope to ask the alderman about the proposal that the minimum wage in Illinois be raised to $15 an hour. Um, I've heard that that is not sustainable or it is not a realistic business model for the city, um, particularly with the pension crisis, just sort of raising that, you know, rate of pay, even for city employees, is not a viable option. I just want to know if this is something that the council has talked about or thought about and perhaps get the audit in the position on the issue. Yes, we have. Uh, the proposal, first of all, is a proposal to raise the city's minimum wage, not the state's minimum wage, to $15. Uh, and yes, we've thought about the implications that it would have on businesses. And like I said earlier, uh, every time that there is a minimum wage debate. Big business, large corporations uh, come back and say this is going to hurt business. And every time we raise tax, we raise the minimum wage. It doesn't hurt business. They continue doing business. They continue making money. The important thing here is that we're putting more money in the pockets of regular Chicagoans. Uh, and that's why I'm in support of raising the city's minimum wage to $15. I look forward to the debate with my colleagues on the city council as we consider this uh, legislation. And uh, everybody in the city of Chicago is going to have the opportunity to come and testify whether you're for it or against it, whether it's a vote up or vote down, uh, to then weigh so that we can weigh the opinions of everybody and be able to make a sound decision. I, for one, am in support of increasing the minimum wage because I believe that we should put more money in the pockets of regular Chicagoans. Uh, it's not fair that McDonald's Corporation, you know, is making millions and millions of dollars and their employees are all making minimum wage. That's just not fair. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hello, caller? Tiene pregunta? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Judy. Hey, Judy. And my question is this. We have residential parking. That's one. We as the citizens, we pay for our parking for our spots on our street. The police refuses to give tickets. They're, they are literally very lazy, extremely lazy. Then we have a restaurant. The restaurant with their clientele take part of the street, and the other part is for the residential parking. Now, it isn't fair because our street goes north, and we have all the, the clientele from the restaurant that comes to our street going south. Okay. Well, hey, Judy, what, what block are you on? I'm on, like, um, how would I say the street? I'm asking my husband because it's a little confusing for me. It would be, like, 26... Uh, it's hard to explain because the way the streets are and the way the this, this system is set up here. But, I mean, I could go to your office, I could, you know, sit down and explain everything, but it's really, really so unfair to everybody what are the in cross the residential streets? area Judy, here. what are the cross streets? Are you talking about 26 in Springfield or 26 in Christiana? Uh, I believe it's Springfield, Springfield. Okay, well, at 26 in Springfield, we have residential permit parking specifically because the clients of La Justicia restaurant were taking up too much space. And if anybody who does not live there cannot have a sticker to be able to park on the block that's south of the alley, just uh, south of 26th Street. Uh -huh. North of the alley, between 26th Street and the alley, is metered parking. 
and that's where people have to pay into the meter to be able to park there and that's where the restaurant patrons are supposed to be parking if there's i'd love to see you come into the office so we can talk about it uh if there's a, a group of owners a, a group of uh, cl uh customers that are parking on on the residential permit parking side uh we usually send the police officers over there and trust me the cops are really happy about giving tickets they love giving tickets uh so I apologize for interrupting, but the cops that we have literally passes through and refuses to give tickets, refuses to give tickets. And then e even with having handicapped parking and everything, everybody even takes up the handicapped parking. By the time you have the officers to come and give, issue tickets, it, it's already too late because the person has already went to the restroom, did what they had to do and everything. And, uh, again, I know this isn't uh, your, also another part of it is, like, with, uh, I know this is, like, changing the subject, but even with Alderman Danny Solis, he's got a street going north and half of the street going south. And, you know, I mean, I know different aldermen have different ways uh, of running things, but this is... I, another issue that you know yeah. we're having problems with too. Tell it, you can come to the office. Well, you can come to the office. Here's the address and the phone my, number. My, my my office is at 2500 South St. Louis, and my phone number is seven seven three. Seven six two one seven seven one, so that we can talk about the issues that are in the, in the twenty second ward. I really can't speak to the issues outside the ward because that depends on that alderman. And, right. But I can give you his his contact info so you guys can talk to him directly. Thank okay. you for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great questions, Alderman. Uh, yeah, no, at, at the end of the day, being an Alderman is being a housekeeper. Uh, uh, we pick up the garbage, we trim the trees, we make sure the lights are on, make sure the water is running or not running in the summer because those fire hydrants uh, get opened up. Uh, and dealing with issues like parking, dealing with issues of, for example, uh, I just went to a block club meeting on the 3000 block of South Springfield, just down the block from where Judy uh, lives. And the issue there was, there was a fire a couple of years ago and we have an empty lot. And the empty lot is being used by an unscrupulous neighbor who is selling used cars. Oh, wow. And it's in the middle of a residential neighborhood, so it's illegal. They can't do that. So it's part of my job to go in and you know, talk to, to, to the guy. He goes, oh, well, I'm renting it and I'm holding cars here because I, I sell cars down on the south side. And we had to tell him, look, you can't do that here. This is a residential block. You can't have cars for sale. Uh, and so, so, so he's moving those cars out. Uh, but being an alderman, and I love my job. I love my job because we get to build stuff, uh, and awesome. we get to help people. We get to help people deal with problems that are day to day, just like Judy's problem with the parking on th 26 and Christiana, and the and the caller, uh, the previous caller with 26 and Christiana, uh, uh, dealing with residential permit parking. But the important thing here is that we're accessible. The important thing here is that people can come to my office. My office number is seven seven three. 7621771 7737621771 we're there on monday from 9 in the morning to 7 in the evening and then tuesday through friday we're there from 9 to 5 uh, and then of course you can always email us uh, at the city of chicago website uh, ward 22 uh, so uh, i love my job because i get to help people and we get to build things i mean awesome. one of the other things we did just recently is we built a new skate park Oh. over at Piotrowski Park, and uh, it's beautiful to drive down 31st and Trip, 31st and Keeler, and see these dozens and dozens of skateboarders just hanging out and, awesome. uh, and, and, and playing in the park because that's what I consider positive loitering. Uh, where you've got the baseball league, you've got the softball league, you've got the soccer league, you've got the skateboarders, you've got the basketball players. When you've got that kind of activity in the park, the riffraff goes away. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, that's uh, great. Uh, we're about running out of time. Is there any other issues you want to touch on before the time runs out? Uh, no, if, uh, if we got some callers, I'd love to take We've some got, callers. Uh, one issue was uh, the new city sticker. I don't know if people understand that. Maybe we can talk about that another time. Uh, what, how about summer jobs in the ward? For youth? Uh, what we encourage people to do, uh, young men and women, and high, specifically high schoolers, to go to the cityofchicago.org website. City of Chicago, one word, cityofchicago.org, and click on employment opportunities, and that'll take you to all of the agencies. Uh, the Chicago Public School System, the Chicago Park District, and all of those agencies that are hiring for the summer, and that's the best way to get in touch with the summer job opportunities.
Great. Well, uh, thank you for all all the questions, callers, and Alderman. Thank you for a lot of the information Freddie, you thank provided. You, thank uh, you for having me. We've got about a couple more seconds left, I guess. Uh, so I'd like to thank Steve for managing the phones for us. Thank you, Steve. Uh, what other thing can we talk about before our time runs out? Just uh, want to remind folks, 773-762-1771. That's been my phone for 22 years. Uh, we haven't moved. We're still at 25th and St. Louis. Please come and see us. Great, great. Uh, any activities coming up in the board that you want to invite somebody to? Uh, we've got a ton of activities going on at Vidum Park, Petrosky Park, Shed Park. Uh, please uh, go to the city's website, go to the park district. It'll, it'll show you all the activities going on. We've got new baseball leagues, new soccer leagues, and we're in really uh, we're in need of co coaches for spe specifically the baseball league. And whatever you can do to help, uh, it's being part of the solution so that we can make this a better uh, neighborhood, a better city for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye.